All right, for this video, we're going to be finding rate from a table. We are going to sneak in some slope type ideas as well. Rate, definition, it is a comparison of two quantities. Now, these quantities are usually different types of units compared to like ratio where they're normally the same types of units like length versus length. So some examples you might see of rate is 60 miles per hour. The miles and the hours are the different types of units. So on the street signs, you might see 60 miles per hour written this way, MPH. Now in math, kind of the notation we use is that slash. So there's 60 miles, the slash per hour. Uh, another example, $20 per hour. You might actually see it written like this for $20 per hour. Now, as far as the abbreviations go, you can see it like this, $20 per hour. Um, if you're using this type of idea, $20 per hour, or even with the dollar symbol there. Now, there is a really close connection between rate and slope. So in this video, we're going to be kind of connecting those concepts together. All right, so let's say you're like at the pool and you got this submarine at the, that you're holding and you're going to let it go from the bottom of the pool. So this table is measuring the depth of that submarine. So at zero seconds, that's right when you let it go, it's at 15 feet below the surface of the water. So that's how, basically how deep the pool is and or it's where you let it go. And then after two seconds, now it's 10 feet below the surface of the water. Then after four seconds, it's five feet under the water. And then at six seconds, it's right there at the surface of the water, made it all the way to the top. So here we are going to find the rate of change for this function here, the function of depth versus time. So we are looking at the dependent variable, which is going to be y versus the independent variable seconds x there. And that is going to be the right column versus the left column. Dependent variable always in the right column, independent variable always in the left column there. So for this example here, we're looking at depth versus time. So let's uh, look at the, the data that we have. The depth, we're going from negative 15 to negative 10 to negative 5 to 0. That's going up by 5 each row that we go down for the depth. So that's going to be 5 feet every. Now we're going to look at the time in seconds. And again, we always read the tables from top to bottom. We're going from 0, 2, 4, 6. That's going up by 2. So that's 5 feet every two seconds. So when we look at depth versus time, that's going to be the depth is going up by five right there. And then the time is going by two seconds. So there. So there's our slope five over two. Our rate, we're thinking that's going to be five feet every two seconds. And we can go ahead and divide this number here and it makes 2.5 feet per second. Now, this is called the unit rate because it's 2.5 feet per one second. Now, if we're just looking at slope only on this, you're doing the same thing that we did on the last example. This is rise over run. It's going to be the change in y's over the change in x's. So we're still looking at depth versus seconds there. So for the y's, it's going up by fives, negative 15 to negative 10, negative 5 to 0, going up by fives. And then the run, that's going to be the x's. We're going 0, 2, 4, 6. That's going up by 2's. So your slope is going to be 5 over 2. And again, if you're still trying to think rate, that's going to be 5 feet every 2 seconds. Your unit rate, that's going to be 2.5 feet per 1 second there. All right, so here we're going to be looking at price of a stock. So basically, you, you go back, you get online, and you look at 10 weeks ago, what was the price of that stock? It was $83. And then looking further, you notice that five weeks ago, that price was now down to $68. And then last week, the price was $56. And then this week, week zero, it is at $53. So we're going to be looking at the rate of change or slope for this function here. So it's actually two questions kind of rolled into one. One, does the rate stay the same or does it change? Is it a constant rate? Um, this is asking whether or not it's a linear relationship. And then two, if it does stay the same, then what is it? So, so you actually got to answer number one before you actually get to this question here. So when we look for rate, we're going to be doing the dependent variable versus the independent variable, which is the same thing on this example as price per week which is the same thing as your change in y's over your change in x's, change in y's over change in x's. And then if you're thinking slope, rise over run, if you've heard that before. Okay, so here we go. Rate of change, price per 
week. Same thing as change in y's over change in x's. So there's kind of your slope formula there. So we're going to go from 83 to 68. So we're looking at the price change between these two pieces of information. So 83 to 68, it went down $15. So it's a down $15 for our change in y's. Now let's look at the x's. We're going from 10 weeks ago to five weeks ago. So that was five weeks that went by. So our change in x's was five. You can be using subtraction to find these numbers as well. So the slope, negative 15 divided by 5 is going to make negative 3 in simplest form. In other words, it did go down $15 in 5 weeks for an average of losing $3 per week. All right, now we're going to look at the next set of information here. We're going from, we're still looking at change in Y's first. We're going to go from 68 to 56. So in this case here, again, you can use subtraction. It lost $12 and we're going from, uh, so lost 12 over there. And then we're looking at five weeks ago to one week ago. That's a difference of four weeks that that happened in. So four goes there for the change in X's. So our slope is going to be a negative three. Again, negative 12 divided by four negative three and if you're thinking rate losing twelve dollars in four weeks for an average of losing three dollars per week now we'll look at the last little bit of information the the last two rows here fifty six dollars to fifty three dollars that lost three dollars and so that's our change in y's now the change in x's we're going from one week ago to this week exactly so that's a change of one week there so change in x's is one so slope we're still doing negative three divided by one still makes negative three for the slope and again this one here it's on average it's losing three dollars per one week so lost three dollars per week next up we're going to put this all together so you can see it all at once all right, finding rate of change or slope for this function here. Again, we're thinking rise over run or change in y's over change in x's. And this does mean we're subtracting the y's, subtracting the x's there. So let's look at the first two pieces of information from $83 to $68 for this price of stock. It's going to lose or go down $15. So that's going to be a negative 15 over. Now we're going to look at the X's, the corresponding X's there. We're going from a negative 10 to a negative 5 or 10 weeks ago to 5 weeks ago. That's going to be a change of 5 weeks there. So negative 15 over 5 for the first two pieces of information there. Now we'll look at the next piece of information. So it would be these two rows here. We're going from 68 to 56. So that's going to be a down 12 or a loss of $12 on the price for uh, this stock here. So that's going to be a negative 12 over. Again, we're thinking rise over run, change in Y's over X's. So now let's look at the X's. We're going from a negative 5 to a negative 1. That would have been four weeks went by. And again, you can use subtraction for that. So that's a negative 12 over four for the rise over run for the middle two pairs. Now let's look at the last two pairs. We're going from a 56 to a 53. So that's going to be a down three. So we're going to go negative three over and then from a negative one to zero. That's a change of one week. So negative three over one. So all of these negative 15 divided by five, negative 12 over four, negative three over one. Simplest form is always going to be negative three on this, no matter which group of points you decide to take. So if you're thinking rate with this, they lost $3 per week. All right, so just a quick summary of slope or rate of change. We're thinking rise over run. We're doing the right column, the in the dependent variable over the independent variable. Uh, change in y's, again, that's a right column over change in x's, that's a left column. So like if we want to do this real quick, this goes up by five. So that's our rise is going to be goes by fives. And then the run, that's going to go with the x's. So that's going to go, be going up by twos. And that's how we find rate of change or slope when we have a table. And another way of looking at this is go ahead and do the division. Five divided by two makes 2.5. In this case, feet per second. It's a unit rate, feet per one second there, one unit. All right, so I hope this helps. Hope you have a great start to your day, rest of your day, evening, whatever time you might be watching.